Hey guys, Youngblood with you for what I hope is the last very delayed Should You Buy video, this time covering the RSI Lynx, the luxury variant of the Ursa Rover, which is included if you already have a Constellation Phoenix or Emerald, but can be bought solo for $55 war bond, which is new money, or $60 using store credit. The Lynx is in-game now, so if you choose to buy the vehicle, you can drive it the same day. The size of the Lynx is 7.75 meters long, 5.7 meters wide, and 3.15 meters tall, which is basically like for like with the Ursa, which was, you know, a design decision uh, made to ensure that choosing one variant over the other didn't impact what ships it can fit into. The components on the Lynx are all vehicle sized and are identical to those on the Ursa, meaning there's no significant performance difference overall. While the shields are thus the same, the hull on the Lynx is more streamlined, meaning lighter, so it is indeed slightly less durable than the Ursa Rover is. They do call out in the Q&A that the underbelly of the vehicle does have some improved armor, so probably not super relevant against combat threats. If IEDs ever become a thing or landing on severely sharp rocks is a problem, it gets a little bump in value there. The better benefit for the Lynx would be the lighter armor giving it a higher top speed, but that is super marginal, being 30 meters per second compared to 29, and a very slight improvement in agility. The suspension on the Lynx is intended to be a little bit softer to support the role of luxury transport, however ground is rocky and bumpy, and it still needs to be able to retain its off-road ability, so the difference there isn't that significant. Uh, weaponry on the Lynx is the same as the Ursa, so you do still have two size 1 energy weapons on a remote turret, but you get the perceived upgrade of two laser cannons compared to the energy repeaters that you get on the Ursa. I don't know why the cannons are the upgrade, because I personally prefer repeaters, especially on a somewhat quick and unstable platform like a rover, because spray and pray will be your friend in these situations, especially when your target is likely to be a hard to hit, you know, target. The Lynx also doesn't come with any countermeasures or anything additional from the Ursa to give it better defensive ability. The value proposition of the Lynx is really a story about luxury, which honestly is a pretty tough sell for most people in the game. You don't feel the soft seats. You don't taste the champagne that's included. So the value is from a role-playing perspective, a visual perspective, which for the record is totally fine if you're that visionary that can appreciate that. For example, there are th Things that are, you know, preference, but can be seen as great additions. Um, you know, instead of the ramp for loading in the rear, you have a panoramic window up the back and into the ceiling for amazing views. In addition to two lateral windows and the rear side panels that you don't get in the Ursa. Um, that is objectively better from a viewing perspective. Um, instead of a cargo area, you have a table and two seats for your passengers in the back, which seems like a nice to have, but is having those niceties better than still being able to carry four people and carrying four SCU of cargo? Well, the Lynx has two crew and two passengers, but it can't carry cargo, while the Ursa carries four people. So you're talking four people, four people. Uh, now, those are two drop seats, but you do get four SCU of cargo, but you don't get the view. So where's the value? That's entirely up to whoever's buying the vehicle, right? Now, for most people, the better armor, the ability to carry cargo, and the same seating capacity is a better rover. And honestly, I'm in that camp, and I think the Ursa is a better rover. Sure, the passengers have access to personal storage, and the crew has access to lockers behind them in the you know front of the vehicle, but the Ursa has a weapons rack and storage for anyone that needs it. So the gains that you get are pretty minimal and frankly kind of insignificant from a gameplay perspective. Um, but if what you're looking for is a perceived luxury experience, then yeah, the value is there. It doesn't come with a bed to add in that ability to kind of log out in the links. Um, so you basically are sacrificing functionality for feel. And that to me is a no-go. 
But that's my personal preference. You know, how many people pick a 400 over a freelancer or a 600 over a Connie or an 890 over a C2 or whatever? The choices people make are their own and how they want to experience the verse is their decision. I may not agree with that. And when I make my recommendations, it's based on what you get in return for your money. And luxury isn't really going to be, you know, a high value there. So... At the end of the day, the should you buy question is simple as it always is with ground vehicles. Taking out all the form over function discussions, the answer is still no. Ground vehicles are a bad bet when waiting, you know, one patch in getting a much better return on your investment and buying for cheap in the game is feasible and a way better approach. The Lynx, it's a damn sexy vehicle. Um, but you know, I'm going to pick function first and then I'm still going to wait to buy the ground vehicle in game anyways. I mean, in all reality, it's going to take you, you know, a handful of ERTs to be able to be able to buy this vehicle in the game. It's not a hard lift. So that's pretty much it for this video. If you guys have questions, please let me know. Otherwise, um, stay tuned for more content coming your way soon. Hopefully again, this is the last delayed video, but until the next one, stay tuned. Talk to you.